Hey guys, welcome to another episode in which we tackle two special moves. This time we do castling and we also do promotion, or in this case, queening. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the king move, and the king can now go two spaces to the left and also two spaces to the right, only if he never moved in the past and only if one of these two rooks never moved in the past. If that's the case, then we can do what we call castling, in which the king goes here and then um, the rook rushes to protect the king this way. And now we have two pieces from the same team moving. Works of course on both sides. If we move one of these to target, like here I move the right rook, then go back. I can't do it with the right rook anymore because this one has moved. So we have these condition in check. And also we're going to be doing um, queening. So queening is when you take a pawn and you make it all the way across the board. It turns into a queen. In the future, we'd like to take this and polish it in such a way that you get to choose which piece you want. You can have a knight, a bishop, a rook, and also a queen. Um, it's actually true in the chess that you can have two queens, so that's also what's going on over here. Works on both sides, and that's what we'll be doing today. So make sure you hit like, subscribe if you enjoy this, and make sure also to share with your friend. Why not? Join the Discord community, and I'll see you quite soon. Cheers! Okay, so this one is about the castling move. And here I have a representation of what it looks like. Um, and I'll read through the condition. To do the castling move, we have to make sure that either the affected rook, in this case the left side rook, and also the king, both of them must have never moved in the past. So if you take your rook, you go up and then you come back down here, you are not available to do the castling. So that's not going to work out. Um, so what happened is that when there is no obstruction in between them, so if all the spaces in between the rook and the king who haven't moved yet, if they're all empty, we can actually put the king, actually we can make sure that the king jump two spaces, so that's the only time in the whole chess game where the king can actually jump by two, and he goes to on the side of the rook, and the rook comes and swap places with the king, and he goes here. So you, you see the end result over here. And to trigger this move, we are going to trigger it on the king move. It's actually something that you have to move your king first. So let's go ahead and take our king move. Going inside of my king class, I'm going to declare, and as we do it with all the special moves, we, we said that last episode, but we're going to start by doing the get special move here to um, show you where you can go. And then afterward, we are going to go back on side of the chessboard and do the process special move in case something has to change, right? So... Return base special move. No, we're gonna do return special move dot none, and then here we have to start looking for these condition. And actually, I'd like to return a special move R instead of none because we might have the option to do two different spot of special move. Um, for the previous one that we've done for the pawn, here we had either left side or right side, and if it happened on the left side, you could not get it on the right side, and that's fine, uh, because it's. It was based on the previous piece's movement, but here, for the king, we might actually have the option to go on both sides, so on both rooks, swap with either one of these. So here, I'm going to return R. Um, what The way we've done it prior in the pawn is that we would return in the middle of the function if the option was possible. Here, I'm going to be looking to add tiles to the highlight on one side and if it also is possible on the other side I will also add this one before I hit the return statement. So no return statement in the middle of my function here is what I meant. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say king move is going to be equal to the move list and then I'll do a dot fine and we'll use the we use link queue in this case. Does it use actually it doesn't use link queue just system dot collection the generic should be enough and we have to look for the following. So I'm going to use a predicate to say the move I'm looking for at the starting position dot x is going to be equal to 4 in x and because um, the king is always at 4 in x, so that's why I'm doing that and m at the index 0 dot y is going to be equal to team is equal to 0, that's a ternary operator right here so if it's 0 then we start at 0, else it's at 7, okay so what am I doing here exactly? I'm going through all the moves in my list and their starting position, if any of those move, any one of the move that we have, if any of those, the starting position is at four in X, which is the king position in X, and then Y, zero or seven, depending on the team. So I'm looking at both king spot, so either 
uh, zero and wait, 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 four, zero. And I'm also looking at four, seven. If either of these two actually show up in the starting position, it means that we have a king move. And we'll see in a second. Uh, if we have a king move, it means that we can't really do anything. Uh, next, we're going to be looking for left rook. And I'm going to say here, we're going to start at the index 0. And y is going to be either 0 or 0 or 7. So that makes sense. And same thing on this side here, but this time it's 7. So we're looking at the starting position for the left rook, the right rook in both team, and also um, the king for both team as well. Now, if these are true, if any one of these actually isn't equal to null, uh, then we won't be able to interact with either left rook, right rook, and if the king has moved at all, when I mean, nothing can happen at that point. So with that logic in mind, we're going to start by checking that. So if the king move is equal equal to null, and my current x is equal to 4, just to make sure it really hasn't moved in the past, right? Um, if that's the case, then we can proceed further. Else, return r, which would mean return no special move. Our second condition here, we're going to be looking for the white team only. First, if our team is equal equal to 0, we're going to check for the left rook. So, left rook. If my left rook is equal equal to null, and remember, it has to equal to null, else um, it means that the left rook has moved, and therefore we can't go any further. And you know what? We're going to do a bunch of single line operator here. Um, so if my left rook is equal to null, and my chess piece at the index 0, would, would it be 0, 7 here? Actually, not chess piece, or board at the index 0, 7. Um... Actually, the left rook should be on 0, 0, I believe. Yeah, so if my left rook at 0, 0, the type is equal equal to rook. If my team is equal equal to 0, so if board at the index 0, 0, the team is equal to my team, so 0 in this case. Now we've made these three check. I'd like to check for obstruction in between these pieces. So we're going to go ahead and do if board at the index zero and actually, no, sorry, three, zero. If that is equal to null, it means there is nothing left to the king. Now, one step further, there's nothing, uh, two space left to the king. And then finally, one space left to the king. If that's all true, it means there is no obstruction in between all of that which would mean at that point, if there's no obstruction, let's go ahead and add that move. So uh, let's do the available move dot add new vector two int with two and then zero. Why? Because we're going two pieces, uh, we're actually going two x's towards the left. So four minus two is equal to two. And the reason I've actually added bracket here is because we have to say r is equal to castling. At this point, we are now available to do a castling move. And that's only for the left rook. Now, obviously, we can copy that for the right rook. But instead, we're going to swap a couple of values. For the right rook, we're going to be looking if this one is equal to null. So if it has never moved in the past, then we have to check at 7, 0. If that type is rook, we have to check if it's also in our team. So the white team in this case. If the board at the index, and then um, let's start by 6 into five actually does that make sense yeah we could do five six actually we did the other way around earlier so five and six and do note that there is one space less on this side so it looks like this instead we have one less thing to check um and if that's the case we're gonna go six zero and we now have the special move of castling available to us we can do the exact same thing here but this time for the black team so what I feel like I'm going to be doing is just grab this whole left rook thing and paste it. Let's make sure we're looking at the right spot. So board at the index 0, 7, 7, 7, 7, and 7. I actually just swap everything to 7 and I think we're good. Um, let's double check if this makes sense. So if I'm a rook, if I'm on the black team, very important here, I'll almost mess this one up. Uh, and then the space in between my king and my left rook is null, null, null. Makes sense. So 3, 2, 1. That's on the left side. Then we go 
2 and 7. That's perfect. Same thing here for the right hand side. I'll copy this one again. 7, 7. My team is equal to 1. If the space at 5, 7, 6, 7 is good, then we're going to go ahead and allow ourselves to move. Okay, let's try this out. It might take a little bit of time before we can move all the pieces, but let's give it a try. So my king should be, I think that's my king. No, that's my king. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That should be my king, actually. And as I was trying to test this out, I've done a huge mistake that you guys probably saw before, but I'm such a beginner in chess that I just didn't know it. <laughs> um, I'm very bad at this, I'm sorry. But what I've done is, and it's a mistake I've done in the previous section as well, I'm actually not spawning the, the, the uh, king at the right place. I'm actually spawning the king on the left side, and I should be spawning it on the right side for the white team at least. Um, so my problem comes from here. I have my king at 3-0 and my queen at 4-0. So instead, it should be the other way around, where my queen is at 3 in X and my king is at 4. Same thing happened on the other side as well because they are facing each other. And the king should be one move after that. It's weird because when I did my logic of enumerating through all of these, I kind of got it right, but then I somehow messed it up when I was spawning. So, uh, yeah... Quite an annoying thing, quite an annoying error actually. So I'm going to go back and test this out now that I've moved my king. And here's my king. I'm going to make sure it's actually at the right spot. So I see king over here at 4-0. And that's the one that spawned. It's right here. This guy. And what I'm going to do is um, try out castling. Now to try out castling, it's going to take a little bit of time. You have to move all of these pieces in between. You could also go under the uh, the spawning mechanic and remove all of these pieces. Just leave the king and the rook. And as you can see here, I have the option to go two towards the left, uh, towards the right. And that's only because these pieces haven't moved yet and all the spaces in between them are cleared. Um, I'll give this a try, right? So I'll start by going up here. Same thing for the other side, you see it here, and go back. And then technically, I should not be allowed to castle again. Yeah, exactly, because I moved this one piece. And that second part is, of course, the post special move. So process special move here. We have the en passant done. Let's collapse this one, and let's do the following. If special move is going to be equal to castling. So within here, we are also going to be looking for the previous move, what happened during the previous move. So I'm going to say last move is equal to the move list at the index move list count minus one. I'll turn that into an explicit value or explicit explicit type, my bad. And we have to confirm that this is, of course, a casting move. So I'm going to start by doing if the last move at the index 1.x is equal equal to either 2 for the left hook, uh, left rook, and hmm, and I could be checking if uh, it's a king that has moved, but at the same time, if we receive special move castling, it means we picked up the king, and then when we pick up another piece that doesn't have castling, the special move is reset back to none, so technically I would not have to check for the king here. But I also want to check if um, we are on either 0 and Y, or 7 and Y, because we could be going in diagonal and trigger this, and I want to make sure it doesn't happen. So I'm going to say, if the last move at the index 1.Y is either 0, or, so I'm going to have to wrap this up in parentheses here, be really careful, it's going to get confusing, or 7. So, so it works on both teams. So basically, I'm going left, right? So left rook here. Now, if that's the case, we can start moving these pieces around. And I just realized something. What I'm going to do instead, uh, since the values are going to be different for either team here, uh, maybe it's going to be a little bit more complex. I'm sorry, not complex, but easier if I put that in another statement down here instead. So if my last move at the index 1, um, ba -ba -ba, like this, so if the y is equal to that, then we are on the white side. Um, else we're going to be else if actually so else if last move is seven then here we're going to be on the black side then let's go ahead and keep a reference to the chess piece and say well chess piece at the index zero zero so my rook actually you know what let's name it rook so we're not confused 
we are now going to move that rook. So I'm going to say chess piece at the index three zero is going to be equal to my rook. And then I'll position the rook. So position single piece, the one that is at three zero. And I'm going to remove the reference to what we had earlier. So chess piece is at index zero zero. So the rook in that case is now equal to null. By doing that, uh, my king already has moved because he moved in the move to function. And now my rook is going to get himself a reference and then I'll assign. Um, so here, it's kind of weird the reason I do that here. It's so I don't have two rook, two of the same reference in the same board, though I guess it doesn't really matter if you do that. So technically you could also just say the following and that would do the job. But you know what, I'm going to leave it as is because I've tested this code before and I didn't test the other one. <laughs> All right, good. Um, now, if we're on the black side, let's go ahead and do the following. Let's just copy and paste first and then look at the value. So instead of zero, zero, we're going to go and do zero seven. Um, here it's also going to be equal to seven, seven, and then seven. Yeah, so we just replace all the zeros in the Y axis for seven. And that would be through for the left rook. Now what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to do the right rook, but I'll do it in such a way that we extend our if statement. So else if last move at the index one, so the lending move dot x is equal to six, which means now we're trying to do a castling move, but with the right side and it's going to be equal to the same exact thing, right? So just copy all of that over and let's have a quick look. So if we are, um, y is equal to zero we are on the white side so that's totally totally fine our black side is seven now instead of looking at zero in x we're going to be looking at seven pretty much here and here and then here for the lending position of the rook instead of being three i believe it's going to be equal to five so five zero and then five zero let's go down here and do seven seven and five, seven, five, seven. Does that make sense? It seems like it does. I'm going to fast forward our testing by going under the chessboard at my uh, spawn all the pieces. I'm gonna go back here and just make sure that um, I actually disable pretty much everything except the rook and the king. So I'll just disable all of that. for both sides because I want to test out quite fast without having to go through the whole process of moving stuff around. There we go. Now giving this a try, as you can see here, I have the option to go on all direction. Technically this might not work at first because I realized that um, we don't have anything in the move list. Oh, okay, okay, never mind, it works. I didn't say anything. Um, so these have move, right? I can move this now. I can kill target with it. Same thing here. And I can't go back and test because I've already moved my king. Uh, this side works well. This side works well as well. And let's try to do one more condition, which we just move this. We move this. Can't do the castling now because first there's a piece in between them. And also because this one already moved. Let's put it back to where it was. Same thing, can't do the move because it already moved in the past. So instead, I'm going to try on this side. Now I can't do it with any of these pieces whatsoever. Same thing for the top side, and I think we're pretty much golden now. Um, if I move in diagonal, no issue. If I move anywhere else where I'm allowed to move, there doesn't seem to be any issue right now. All right. So I think we got our castling move to, to work quite well. And uh, that's how we've done it. Okay, so we're done with the castling and I went ahead and I re restored pretty much the whole board here. So I removed the commentary that I had. And um, what I wanted to do initially is make another video for promotion, but promotion is so easy, not easy, but it's like very fast to make. So instead of doing that, let's actually include promotion in this video. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Promotion is very simple. It's um, when you take your pawn and the pawn lands at the very last spot, so you can't go any, any further, then that pawn becomes something. You get to choose the something, so you get to choose what you want. For example, here, uh, promotion chest, 
you get to choose if you want to have a queen, a knight, a rook, or a bishop. Here are the stats of what people actually take. Um, I would argue that if you take anything else in the queen, you're just showing off, you're just trolling, you could say. Um, because, you know, the queen is definitely the best piece you can have. And here is one thing, you can have two queens at the same time through promotion. So, um, what I wanted to do is make sure that one, we have, um, once we have a pawn that goes towards the end, I'd like it to become a queen as of right now. Like, I'm not gonna give you the option to do knight, rook, bishop as of right now. It's something I'd like to include when we do a little bit more UI work in the future. But at the moment, I'm just gonna say if you make it to that point, we're gonna turn you into a queen. And that move is actually called queening. It's, it's a real thing, I think, right? Queening. Yeah. Each side queening a pawn. So it's actually a word. I'm not inventing this one. Um, and it's another special move we're going to be coding directly inside of the pawn. So that's why I open up the pawn.cs. And inside of the pawn.cs, let me just remove my face. Um, inside of the pawn.cs, it's a one line operation basically. All we have to do is check are we at the end, right? So I'm going to do that beneath direction because I'll need the direction call. We're going to say if my team is equal equal to zero and my current y is equal to, we should do six or seven, we should do six, right? Um, does that make sense? Yeah, okay, so if I'm the white team and my pawn is now at six, then I have the option to go one above, but that gives me the option to do, uh, to do promotion, basically. So if that's the case for the white team or it's the case for the black team, so team is equal equal to one and my current y is equal to 1 as well. Then we're going to go ahead and... Oh, did I forget something here? Yeah, I did. Then we're going to do a... Actually, what? <laughs> we're going to return special move dot promotion. Here, um, I did not keep it in memory here. Because if we have the option to do promotion, it's impossible to have the option to do en passant because it would be on a whole different y level. So I'm just going to straight up return promotion here, uh, which doesn't mean the promotion will happen. It just means that, you know, you have the option to move your pawn. And if you decide to move that pawn, actually, yeah. So here that would mean promotion would happen because if you decide not to go with the one up and you go diagonal, you kill something. Well, by killing something, you end up at the last tile anyway, and then you have promotion. So there is no additional check that would need to be done here. If we actually move our pawn at that point, we are 100% uh, gonna queen. So let's go on our checkboard, uh, sorry, chessboard, and implement that. Should be quite simple. We're gonna go down to process special move. I'm gonna put it right in between the two here because uh, just in terms of order here, this is also a pawn move. So I'm gonna put it beneath the other pawn move. And inside of here, hmm, um, let's check the last move, right? So if we actually did promotion, last move is equal to the move list at move list dot count minus one let's do explicit i actually don't use explicit uh, values when i code by my own but since i'm on i'm on youtube <laughs> i do it here and it doesn't seem to give me what i want here but i know it's a vector two int i believe makes sense it does make sense yep okay so with that in mind i'm going to be targeting the chess piece so chess piece my pawn, chess piece at the index, last move 1x and last move 1y. So my lending position of the pawn, which is going to result into that, that pawn, so the target pawn, we could call it, if I can type. Good. Now moving off, let's make sure that it actually was the pawn. So if uh, target pawn dot type is equal, oops dot type is equal equal to a chess piece dot pawn. Uh, once more, I'm being very careful here by adding this condition um, because technically I believe we will not need it for the sole purpose that if we made the move and special move is equal to promotion, it means that the target we had wasn't actually, was a pawn, right? Um, yeah. And if we were to select a pawn that would not be available for promotion, then in that case, that wouldn't show up because we wouldn't receive the thing here because special movie is being reset every time I pick up a piece is what I'm trying to say. 
Okay, next up, we're gonna be looking at the team. So if our team, so if our target pawn dot team is equal equal to zero, and the landing position of my last move, oh sorry, one dot y, if that is equal to seven in this case, because it's the white team, and white team has has to cross all the way to the other side, then here's what we're gonna be doing. We are going to say, um, we're going to create a new piece right up. So how do we create a new piece? We're going to do it with the following call. So chess piece queen, or you could say new queen is equal to spawn single piece. What is the type? Type of queen for the team zero in this case. With that new queen in the game, I would like to destroy the previous piece, the previous pawn. And I'm going to say, destroy chess pieces at the index my last move so basically my pawn so I'd like to destroy this one basically um, but we have to go through the game object so to get the game object I'll just do this right here so I'll copy over what I had prior like so and let's make sure we do dot game object it's very important else I think it might actually destroy uh, the script yeah it's gonna destroy the script here in this case so we're going to destroy the game object of that pawn then we also have to make sure we delete it from um, this array. But instead of deleting, let's just overwrite instead. So I'm going to be grabbing this array and I'm going to say this is equal to my new queen. And let's go ahead and move that new queen now. So position single piece with, of course, last move. Wait, can we do it this way? Yeah, so I'm going to say the landing position here and also the landing position in Y. And technically with this, we should now have the queening for the white side. And I'm going to give it a try because I'm not 100% sure if it's going to work. So let me just test this one out real quick before I go and I do the same thing on the black side. So to do the following, I'm going to go ahead and go through a couple of moves. There we go. And now, as you can see, we had this little issue here where, um, well, first we have a queen, right? So that's a very good start. Is that a queen? Yeah, in memory it's also a queen. I killed the king, so that, my bad. But it seems to work. The only problem I saw is that we kind of drag the queen around. Uh, instead of just forcing it inside of the... Uh, in, well, forcing it at its position right there. So I'm going to say position single piece and make sure we send in the overload that has the boolean at the end, saying it through. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, but this time for the black team. So if target pawn dot team is equal to 1, and my uh, Y position, my landing position is equal to zero, then I'm gonna go ahead and create a queen for the black team. This remains the same. This remains the same. And also this remains the same, yeah. So I think everything remains the same there. And just like that, we are gonna have our promotion slash queening mechanic already completed. Um, in the future, what we'd like to do is put that behind a piece of UI. Why? For the sole purpose that you want to give the option um, to the player if they want to troll and uh, and actually, how you can you say that? Yeah, troll and um, let people choose to have a knight instead or a bishop. Um, one thing that I just I just saw I didn't really like and let me know if you guys think the same. As I move this around here and I do my promotion, there's going to be a weird movement mechanic where my piece is in the air, but then when I put this one there, it just snaps in instantly there. It's a small, very, very small thing, right? We don't technically have to fix it, but I'd like to fix it. And the way I'll approach this is by removing this statement here, actually. I just added, I know, but I'm going to remove it. And instead, I'm going to manually position this piece. It's a special move, right? So I'm going to give myself, um, I'm going to give myself a chance to do that. So I'll say this new piece I'm creating, the new queen, not transform that position. I like to set that to the same one as my current piece here. So this, I'm just going to match that transform that position. By doing this, we are going to move the, the queen exactly where my pawn is and it's gonna do the smooth drag. So it should look just a little bit smoother and to make sure it works, of course, I'm going to be doing the testing. So let's go here, there, there. Let's make sure we have a good look. Yeah, so it's much, much smoother. I actually appreciate that quite a lot. So a small improvement done. I'm quite happy with this video. I'm quite happy with what we've done today. 
And yeah, in the next video, we're going to start uh, simulating some moves in order to make sure we're not going somewhere where the king would be in danger afterward, or we're not moving a piece that was protecting our king. That's the uh, last part we're going to be doing, and it's also the hardest part we're going to be doing of the section number two. But once we have that, we're going to be all, all good with the real rules of chess, and we're going to have a solid chess game, um, single player chess game for a game. So thank you so much for watching. As always, please drop me a like. Uh, subscribe, join the Discord, I never really say that, but we have a community going on on Discord and you're invited. We have a lot of fun, we chat and we uh, share ideas, so it's quite cool. A lot of people like to help out as well. Um, yeah, so if you'd like to join that, please do so. Drop me a like, drop me a subscribe, and I'll see you very, very shortly with the rest of this episode. Cheers.